There's a common mis misconception that, quote, isobaric counter diffusion uh, is no, of no concern to divers, and that even on the far end, people that don't know what's going on, uh, you know, say, well, you know, we don't have to worry about it, uh, it doesn't happen. It does happen. It's been demonstrated in the chemistry laboratories, okay? Isobaric counter diffusion means you have two gases moving in opposite direction. And depending upon the initial configuration or the gas loading, you can either add more gas to that particular loading and make the amount of saturation higher, or by switching strategically, you can pull some of the gas that's already there and let it go out faster. Okay? This isn't not this isn't the figment of somebody's imagination. This happens in the diver. Is it important? Yes, it is very, very important for the decompression diver, the technical diver. Is it important for the recreational diver? Probably not. First of all, recreational divers don't switch gases. Technical divers will switch gases on the way up or change uh, CCR set points to optimize their decompression. Uh, it's very important how you choose your gas switches, okay? If you're diving helium to great depths, let's say six, five, six hundred feet, and you come up and you switch to air, which has a mismatch between the amount of nitrogen and or helium in the mixture, you get what we call an isobaric slam. You have high concentrations of one gas trying to get out fast or come in fast, and when that happens, that causes problems. We know, for instance, that on deep dives, uh, let's say world record attempts, where people uh, push the envelope and we get uh, high helium, or, excuse me, uh, tri uh, tri mix mixtures that are dialed down with a you know, with a lot of helium uh, to, to maximize uh, decompression. Uh, we know that air brakes, even for five or ten minutes, have been catastrophic. And the reason is, is that the air brake is not matched gas-wise to what is in the mixture, the trimix. So if you had an air brake which has 80% nitrogen and the trimix only has 20% uh, nitrogen, uh, there's a slam associated with the, with the rapid change of PPO of nitrogen. How do you get around that? How do tech divers get around this? Okay. Um, the easiest way is not to do gas mix switches from helium to nitrogen. Okay. But that makes your decompression longer. So what do you do? The safe way to do this, and this has been done in our data bank and we can demonstrate it, because we have hits when the other side hasn't been done. The safe way to do it is, if you're going to be doing gas switches from helium to nitrogen mixtures, you try to keep the, um, the fraction of, uh, of nitrogen close. Okay, so if you're diving uh, you know, an 1840 mix, 30-40% uh, nitrogen. If you're going to be making decreases in helium and increases in oxygen, you should do it as you do that so that you keep the partial pressure, I mean you keep the fraction, the nitrogen fraction, as close as you can to what was in your original mix. It's a no-no, a no-no to dive nitrogen mixtures and switch to helium. Most tech divers know that. Um, that. That situation produces what we call isobaric, isobaric supersaturation. Because when that happens, the helium comes in so fast, nitrogen goes out so slow that the gas loading on the previous mixture gets increased by so much. And when the gas loading goes up, if there are bubbles present, both gases go into the bubbles. So you don't want to have high concentrations of both gases. So if you're trying to optimize decompression procedures, 
using gas mix switching, you should do so that one, you never switch from a nitrogen mix to a helium mix. I don't think anybody who dives in the real world does that, but let me tell you, if you do, the, do do that, laboratory experiments by Lambertson years ago showed that it was a disaster. But if you're going to be doing switches from, and this is usually on open circuit, of course, if you're going to be doing switches from uh, helium mixes to nitrogen mixes, as you do those switches on the way up, try to keep the nitrogen fraction close to what was on the bottom mix as you were coming up. Now, when you get in the shallow zone, like when you get into the 50-foot zone, I mean, the 70-foot the zone, or even shallower, switching over to, um, 50, uh, you know, 50-50 heliox, or 50-50 even nitrox, in that zone, ICD doesn't seem to be as much a problem or as causative of isobaric counter diffusion supersaturation as it does in deeper depths. And so the, the problems with ICD are magnified as you go deeper and deeper. As you get shallower and shallower, if you've been following a decompression glide path that is um, safe within your model calculations and, and, and efficient, when you get into the 70 foot zone or so, switching to 50-50 heliox or 50-50 nitrox, um, even though the uh, the 50 percent uh, nitrogen may be higher than what you're coming up on your on your switch gas, uh, seems to be okay because uh, because of the gas dynamics. Okay, but let me just say that uh, contrary to to what you hear uh, among people that maybe don't understand this is that ICD is a very, very important factor.